Oh, did you hear the jaw pressure? <laughs> Do not like my volunteer today. Donkey. Oh, little Kaido. Those hands. You want some fish? Whoa. <laughs> I like it when she has her mouth flat and you get close. Woo, <laughs> brain fact, oh, brain fact. Oh, venom all over my nub. Come on. Here, you get half. Break it. <laughs> Bite it. Donkey! You got some weird donkeys, mister. Oh, there's enough space in here, Camille. Oh my god. <laughs> Just hanging out with my dromedary camels and my friend Andrew Gahooly. What up? Old, old Gahooly. Comment below if you want to see Gahooly do a dance. Do a Fortnite dance. Do, do, do a Fortnite dance. Uh, yeah, you could probably kick you in the face from right there. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> like, I'm just stuck here. Ooh, double kick. Ooh, what is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out with Pepe, the Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. It looks like he went to the bathroom in there, but he's not top priority right now. We got to take care of Justina. She's hanging out, coiled up right here. Justina is my 12, 13 foot long Indonesian king cobra, and she needs to get a good clean because she poops all over the place after eating a nice big python. Let's get her out gently. She should be good to go. No shedding I have to worry about right now. She's looking beautiful. Gorgeous looking Indonesian King Cobra. And a snake that I have known since I was actually 17 years old. It used to be owned by my good friend, Justine Galata. And that's why her name is Justina, after Justin. Beautiful Indonesian King, so big. You wouldn't even think that she's a female, she's so large. But this is the biggest venomous snake in the world. Males can get upwards to 16, almost 18 feet. Woo, and the females can whew, get close to 14 feet long. Massive venomous reptiles. Woo. Second longest venomous snake in the world is the black mamba getting upwards to 14 feet long. She is a beast Woo, of a king cobra. Nice and easy, mama. Just gotta read her body language, guide her right over here into the, woo, into the holding receptacle. Let's see how we do. Nice and easy. Beautiful horn receptacle built by my buddy Andrew out of Carolina. Hopefully he'll be helping us out with some custom cages because we're still trying to bump out a lot of the big king cobras and mambas. There we go. Nice horn receptacle right there. While she's in there uh, relaxing, I'm going to clean her enclosure. It's got a lot of uh, goop all around the place. You can see the king cobras when they poop. It's like spraying liquid everywhere. It's like liquid concrete. The consistency of the python meat or the snake meat that they eat because they're snake eaters. It's kind of like fish meat, so it's really, it gets, goes right through them and then all over the walls of the cage. So I'm gonna clean this and I'll be right back. All right, so we got her enclosure nice and clean. We can put her back. Look at this king cover. She is the definition of a beast. Just, ooh, just gotta be real careful. It's really tough working with a king cover that really is upset with you. Ooh, there we go. A little quick hand movement. Woo! Last thing I need is to get bit in the belly. Come on. Come on. She is a tough king cobra. Come on. I'm just giving her little light touches on the back of the hood to entice her to move out a little bit better. Come on, mom. Look at you. This is the toughest king cobra. One of the toughest king cobras I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Nothing like a really cranky king cobra. Nice and easy. So, like I said earlier, she's an Indonesian king cobra, and there's actually a guy who hit me up from Indonesia who has a uh, female king cobra that's leucistic, all white, and it's actually almost as big as this one, a little bit skinny. The guy wants a lot of money for it, so uh, I'm not spending money on it. I gotta build out these crocodile enclosures and get my fencing done. That's more important right now. But hey, if there's a sponsor out there that wants to, to donate money for a leucistic king cobra, whew, uh, I would happily house a white king cobra here. I just gotta focus on what's important right now, and that's the animals that I've been raising up all these years, upgrading them to bigger, beautiful lagoons so we can give these uh, crocodiles the best setups in Florida. Whew. All right, I'm gonna get her into her enclosure. Nice. She is in a mood. Just a little spin around to 
inside her elsewhere. There we go. <laughs> Let me lock that up. Oh, oh it's not. I got to use the key. So yeah, basically this guy hit me up the other day, had me throw things, sent me photos of a white king cobra, and uh, in my opinion, a great looking animal, but I don't have uh, $25,000 to spend on a white king cobra. I've never even spent that kind of money on a snake. So, you know, maybe in the future when all the projects are done, if there's another one available, I'll invest in a white king cobra because I gotta admit, I've always wanted a leucistic king cobra and an old black king cobra, but those are harder to get. It's actually easier to get leucistics than old black ones. In the Philippines, they have old black king cobras and in Africa, they have old black black mambas. Woo! I want an old black black mama. Why can't somebody donate one of them? <laughs> All right, Senor Pepe, we're gonna take you out. You behave now. Last couple times I've dealt with you, you've been really naughty. <laughs> Do not bite my volunteer today. You know it's hard enough to get volunteers to come out here and clean this enclosure full of crocodiles. Now I gotta worry about you biting them while we're filming. Come on. Look at that sexy looking Mexican West Coast woo, rattlesnake. Beautiful animal found in New Mexico the Mexican West Coast, and they get much larger than this guy. He's uh, he's on the small side. I've seen them thicker than my thigh. Right in there. Close this up real quick. And I have the pleasure of coming here. And grabbing. It's, where'd it go? There it is. The spicy meatball. <laughs> Clean, ready to go. Just wanna make sure everything's beautiful. I actually have a, a guest coming over to collaborate. I got Nick Bingo coming over, so he's gonna bring some malt to feed to the crocs. And uh, we gotta make sure everything looks nice and pretty before he gets here. So let me change out this water for some fresh water. This will need the best. H2O is what I use for my snakes. Some people use tap water, some people use well water, some people use Zephyr Hills water, some people use public spring water, but me? Only the best from the Fountain of Youth, which I have piped up to this sink right over here. <laughs> it looks ugly in here, so nobody thinks it's the Fountain of Youth. Mmm, I'm gonna live to be 120. All right, we got it nice and clean. Let's get this big guy out. Woo! Nothing beats a really big rattlesnake. Such an early animal. And their venom is very nasty. I have a friend who's been bit by one of these guys and it puts you through hell. Rattlesnakes have a very necrotic venom. And depending on the species, they'll have neurotoxins too, like a cobra, depending on what type we're dealing with. But uh, just the hemo and cytotoxic components of the venom will just eat your blood cells and flesh. And it causes a lot of pain. The most painful bites are typically viper bites. Uh, we're gonna move on. We're gonna go check up on the baby cobras. See how this black and white spitting cobra's doing. He's getting big. Woo -hoo -hoo. And then go check on the little baby monocled cobra. And then Nick Bingo should be here soon with some mullet. We're gonna feed the crocs. And I gotta put in some nesting material for the crocodiles because we might have some eggs coming from this toothy and airy soon because it's springtime and they've been <laughs> dancing. All right, my favorite type of snake, a snake that will spit venom at you. So I got my little snake hook right here. Let's get this enclosure open. This little black and white spitting cover that my buddy from Fang Factory. Oh, 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 venom all over my nub. Come on. Come on, stop spitting at me. Good thing I don't really have any wounds on me right now. I'm using this nice little Midwest Tongs neonate hook for little vipers and cobras. Wow, he has gotten big. He was literally that big when I picked him up. Beautiful black and white spinning cobra found throughout Asia, typically all black, but this is the black and white version of uh, Naja Simensis. Woo, really cranky snake. Really cranky, look at that, look at that hood. What a sexy, Ooh. what a, oh, look at that. Yikes, he's just biting everything. Did you see him chew on that? He's a cranky cobra. I typically do not, ooh, I typically do not free handle this cobra too much. I don't like to free handle cobras that are too small because they whip around too quick. And it really depends on the personality. You never just pick up a random cobra. Oh, look at that. Beautiful black and white spitting cobra found throughout Asia. How can you not love cobras? All right, so we're just gonna take them like this, put them in this snake horn receptacle. There we go. 
I'm gonna go uh, wash my nub. Did you know that venom can be ingested and it just can't go in your bloodstream? If it goes in your bloodstream, it will affect you. Poison is what you eat that kills you. So poison versus venom, can't eat poison. Venom, you can swallow it, but you shouldn't. So uh, <laughs> nothing like Cuban coffee and snake venom in the morning. All right, so we got the enclosure nice and clean, cleaned all the dry venom off of his glass. Let's get this little guy out of the whole receptacle and back in his enclosure. Look at that beautiful snake. We're just gonna get him right over here, put him right back in there. There we go. Little spitting cobra. Love the spitters, don't like getting spat on. There we go, put a lock on that, make sure it is nice and secure. Oof, he's a cranky little snake, look at him. Oh, and already venom back on the glass. All right, now we're gonna go check on this little baby monocled cobra that we actually hatched out from Big Bertha and Sunshine the Albino. Oh, there he is, he's right in the back. Come here, little guy. This is uh, my little buttercup. Hello, my little buttercup. Oh, he's so cranky. Little monocled cobra. Let me see if I can just get him hooked out of there. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful little monocled cobra. Wasn't eating for about a week or two, but now seems to be doing great. Love this snake. This is Big Bertha's little kid. and. Uh, this one's actually deep in shed. You can see uh, almost like a foggy looking belly and eye cap. So having problems seeing right now, but this is a gorgeous looking monocled cobra. Drop for drop, more venomous than the king cobra and also called a monocled cobra because of the single O on the back of the hood. See that right there? And that's to mimic like an eyeball. So if a predator is trying to attack this cobra, it looks like this cobra is still looking back at the predator and makes the animal hesitant to attack. And uh, same thing with the Indian cobras with the two eyes on the back. That kind of looks like a pair of glasses. Look at that little boba, little boba da cobra. Yes, I love you. Let me just play you with a little flute. Please, buttercup. You know, when they play the flutes in India or uh, in the Middle East or anywhere like that, they're not charming the snakes by making music for them. It's simply just the movement of an object distracting the cobra. They're very visual. And technically, they don't have ears, so they're not going to be hearing any tunes. Right in there. I'm gonna clean up this enclosure because he's a little guy. I don't have to do too much maintenance in here. Not that much poop. <laughs> Except for this little spiky meatball. I'm gonna give him some fresh water. And I'll see you guys in a split. After watching Kung Fu Panda 4, I can do this. All right, so we got an enclosure nice and clean for our little monocled cobra deep in shed. Hello, little buttercup. You're my sweetest little boy. I love you. Being you're so cranky, but you're just like your mother, and I love you very dearly. Please get in there, buttercup. Thank you. Put a lock on that. Good to go. Oh, my goodness. There is poop everywhere. This puff adder never resists food, and it's always willing to crap all over the place. Surprisingly, this time, not all over the glass. He loves to do that. So this is the puff adder from Africa. This snake is the cousin to the cocoon viper, the rhino vipers. They're all in the bitus family. So that's the short, fat-bodied snakes from Africa that move like a caterpillar across the ground. Maybe we can get them to move a little bit because I know you guys love to see stuff like that. You want to do a little bit of move, Puffy? You want to do a little bit of moving, Puffy? Now, a bite from the snake, even though it looks very adorable, like a caterpillar going across the ground, a bite from a puff adder will literally rot your flesh. Look at that, how cool is that? Like a little caterpillar train. Choo-choo. Just using the muscles of their belly to move straight in a line. Snakes might not have limbs, but they're the most capable, mobile animals on the planet. Swimming, climbing, going through tight crevices. These guys are incredible. And uh, this puff adder, he's only like three plus feet long. These guys can actually get like five, six foot. So I've seen them pretty, pretty big. And they're one of the fastest striking snakes in the world, next to the death adders and the kaboon vipers. Let's get this puff adder right in here, the holding receptacle. There we go. Love the horn receptacle. Thank you so much, Andrew, for building this thing. Such a badass piece of equipment. And we got safety bolt right here. We have some crazy animal in there. So it can't move the glass or the taxi. Now I'm gonna clean this up. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, let's do this. We have a clean exhibit for this animal. We're going to put this pot back where it belongs. A lot of people see animals like this and think, they're definitely juicing. How could they be that thick? Well, it's actually just protein and proper workout. Every every day every week proper protein proper workout how can you look at the snake like this and think he's not natural thick is good this beautiful thick snake this this is a male i can tell by the way it tastes and the length of his tail okay let's put this big bad buster right where he belongs back in his exhibit on display for the public so girls boys 
and other can learn about the beautiful animals on our planet who respect the snakes. This is a very bad Schwarzenegger. I'm sorry, guys. Comment below. How bad was Schwarzenegger? Comment below. Training the snake. Locked and secure. Good to go. Quick, we have to get to the crocodiles. Get in the chopper. All right, I want to show you guys Kevin real quick too. I'm not gonna mess with him too much, but you can see he's deep in shed. Check that out. You can see his eyes are very opaque. So he's not really feeding right now. He's just uh, resting and waiting for all that that shed skin to come off. We're just gonna gently put this hide right back over him and let him be. Let's go to the crocs. All right, guys, I'm getting all this nesting material in the enclosure all by myself. That's me. Come on, Mason. Get out of here. There we go. So we have all of our nesting material right here. If you look, it's mainly like rocks mixed in with dirt and sand. For Cuban crocodiles, this is what they like to use for nesting. For other species, it's different. You have Nile crocodiles that like to excavate into the banks, digging deep holes in sand. Then you have things like alligators, Chinese alligators, and they build up nests with like swamp material, like dead plants. Take all that stuff and make a nice human nest. So every species is different depending on the habitat they come from. I'm gonna utilize this little dip over here. I'm gonna dump this as a base and probably add more sand and whatnot later on. So uh, there's a nice little dump right there. Just gotta watch out because it looks like Aries is trying to ambush me. And uh, Aries, even though I've known that now crocodile since I was a little kid, he will have no problem taking me out and eating me if I make any mistake with this guy. These animals, even though I love them, they will kill you, take you down. And crocs can lay anywhere from 30 to even 60 plus eggs. So we want to make sure she has enough nesting material to make a nice big cavity and drop a lot of eggs. So hopefully we get crocodile eggs later this year. Back in the water. I've got to finish what I'm doing so you can have nice nesting material. And Aries, big boy. Come on, big boy. Come on. Come on. Come on, big boy. There you go. Back in the water. I'm gonna give you guys a nice place to put your babies. Now we got more soil and sand with mixed rock, which is really good. Oh my goodness, it's so heavy, but that's great. It's gonna be a perfect nesting material for these guys. There we go. Just gotta be real careful. Aries is hanging out right here. I do not wanna make a mistake with these big crocs. There we go. And then dump that right here. Perfect, super exciting. Gonna be the first time that we get babies from these crocs here at this facility. Ooh, we got Nick Bingo over here helping out feeding the crocs today. While you're feeding the crocs over in that corner, I'm gonna put in the rest of this dirt. Oh, All you gotta do is make that pop call sound. Oh! <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm just gonna get it all over here just like that so right now. and dump all this so these crocodiles have a good spot to lay those eggs. Nadia, you want some fish? Whoa! Whoa! I'm sorry, did you want some fish or did you want me? Whoa! Fish? Oh, that's a plant. Fish is right there. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, she's fast. Woo! Come on, baby. I just want to feed you some fish. Whoa! Mama, go easy on me. Just want to give you this fish. There we go. You're a naughty crocodile. There we go. She loves her fish. Woo! <laughs> Short of that fish. Bam! There you go. Woo! That was great. Dude, the adrenaline rush just when she chomps down on it. You can't even explain it. You like that, baby? You might want to get another fish ready before she swallows this one up. I can't thank you enough, Nick, for bringing all this fish. It's so good to add variety to the diet of a crocodile. Monitor lizards, crocs, all that stuff. It's really good to have variety. It's so good. Majestic. It just takes it down like it's nothing. You ready? Oh! oh. I'm make it work for this one, though. Last, you ready, Nadia? Last two. Oh, Whoa! There you go. The gator, <laughs> oh, she's going to eat it fast, too, this time. <laughs> Yikes, dude. She's swallowing it with the spines facing down. They're tough. Yeah, she's starting to, to really like the tilapia, I think. Baby, does that hurt with all those spikes? Don't you want to flip it around? Oh my goodness, look at you. You're so beautiful. I like it when she has her mouth full. I can get close. <laughs> a little too close. See, she flipped it around. Now she'll be able to swallow it. Look at that. 
Oh, over my face. Oh. Oh, that was so sick. She just growled like a T-Rex. She's actually letting me touch her a little bit, which is really cool. Oh, little Kaido. Oh, okay. You like him, Nick? I love him, dude. I, <laughs> I think Nick's going to end up getting an order now. <laughs> I love how he puts his hands up to hold your hand while he's eating. There's just nothing cute. Little Kaido. Little, look at those hands. Look at those hands. Kaido. What are you doing, Kaido? All right, let's feed Choby, my big bull alligator, some chicken. Woo, we got the good stuff today. Oh, he just took the head. Oh, my goodness. You ready, Choby? Oh, my goodness. Did you hear the jaw pressure? Ooh, he's eating that with some tenacity. This alligator is roughly 11 feet long, big nuisance gator that Stone had a nuisance gator call for about a year or two ago. And sadly, this alligator was gonna end up in a hunting ranch where people pay a lot of money to shoot big bull gators. So I actually paid for this alligator, helped Stone bring him in, and now he's living a beautiful life here at CWW. What are you doing, buddy? All right, Choby, nice big rooster for you, or a chicken. Good snack for my big old American alligator. All right, beautiful people, that's it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. And most of all, follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you love. I love working with Crocs. I got to do it every day of my life. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, you could probably kick you in the face from right there. Yeah, dude. <laughs>